Good evening. Tonight I'd like to reflect with you on the gospel uh, for Friday of the 32nd week in ordinary time on the memorial of St. Francis Xavier Cabrini. It's taken from Luke chapter 17 verses 26 through 37. Jesus said to his disciples, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day that Noah entered the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Similarly, as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating, drinking, buying, selling, planting, building. On the day when Lot left Sodom, fire and brimstone rained from the sky to destroy them all. So it will be on the day the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, someone who is on the housetop and whose belongings are in the house must not go down to get them. And likewise, one in the field must not return to what was left behind. Remember the wife of Lot. Whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it, but whoever loses it will save it. I tell you, on that night, there will be two people in bed. One will be taken, the other left. And there will be two women grinding meal together. One will be taken, the other left. They said to him, where, Lord? He said to them, where the body is, there also the vultures will gather. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, yesterday we heard about the kingdom of God. Jesus was being asked, well, when will the kingdom of God come? And Jesus said, don't follow those who say, oh, here the kingdom of God is, or there the kingdom of God is. They were asking, where is the kingdom of God? But they did not realize that the kingdom of God was already here. Jesus, when he began his preaching, he said, the kingdom, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. He had brought the kingdom in his very person. Uh, origin of Alexandria uses the term auto basileia. He brought the kingdom of God in himself. Indeed, the kingdom of God isn't always found in big and great signs, but sometimes it's like the tiny mustard seed that grows into the biggest plant, or it's like the, the pearl of great price or the treasure hidden in the field. It's like the leaven hidden in the bread that makes all of the dough rise. It's there, but it grows only gradually. The kingdom of God is here and not yet. Today, Jesus carries on talking about the kingdom of God and not just what the kingdom of God is or how one might discover the kingdom, but also about the demands of the kingdom. They demand, the kingdom demands, and what Jesus demands of his disciples is that they not sit back, that they not procrastinate. Right? The kingdom of God must be advanced. The people in the days of Noah, they procrastinated. They put off. Noah's building the ark. He's working. He's working. Whereas they're eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. But then the flood came and they were all destroyed. Same too with the people of Sodom. They carried on with eating, drinking, buying, selling, planting, building, and all kinds of immoral acts without a thought to God until fire and brimstone rained from the sky to destroy them all. Even the wife of Lot looked back rather than looked ahead. She was not concerned about advancing where the Lord would lead. We cannot procrastinate. We can't live in the past. We can't live in an imaginary or fantasy world. The kingdom of God is here, but not yet fully present. And so we work to help build Christ's kingdom. St. John Paul II said, a vocation is a gift whose purpose is to build up the church and to increase the kingdom of God in the world. Remember, the kingdom of God is a kingdom of justice and truth, a kingdom of love and peace. It is not like the earthly kingdoms, nor is the king like earthly kings. He does not seek to dominate and control his people. He is the king who shows his love at Calvary when he gives his life for his people. Jesus himself says in today's gospel, whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it, but whoever loses it will save it. What Jesus demands of his, of his disciples is a generosity in love. Jesus concludes today's gospel with an aphorism, a Jewish aphorism, where the body is, there also the vultures will gather. A vulture is zealous, eager to get his food. In the Parsi cemetery in Mumbai, for example, the Parsis bury their, uh, their dead not, above, not below ground, but above. You see the vultures sometimes, or at least you used to see the vultures hovering above. The vulture knows exactly what it wants and where to go. Well, what about us and the kingdom? Do we know what we want? Do we know where to go? Do we know how to build the kingdom? With what type of energy and zeal do we carry out and live our vocation? 
Today is the feast of St. Francis Xavier Cabrini, the first American citizen to be canonized. She was canonized in 1946. She was born in 1850, uh, and she, uh, was a, uh, she wanted to enter religious life, but she was a sickly child, and so she at first was not permitted to uh, uh, enter a religious congregation, but she started one of her own. She had a great desire to be a missionary, uh, and she founded the missionaries of the Sacred Heart, uh, who ministered to migrants. She wanted to go uh, to the Christian to the to the East to China. She met with Leo the Thirteenth, who told her, "No, no, no, go to west, go west, go west." And so she arrived in New York, where there were at least fifty thousand immigrants, Italian immigrants at that time, many of whom were very, very poorly catechized, and there were many orphans. And she set about building a hospital, Columbus Hospital, and ministering to the Italians there and catechizing them and taking care of the orphans. And little by little, she moved further and further west, also to Chicago. Uh, uh, and then even further west to Denver. She, her congregation spread to many different countries. And, and so she really was zealous. I had the opportunity to live at the Apostolic Nunciature and to work there, and we had a series of letters of Mother Cabrini, all writing to the Apostolic Delegate at that time uh, about uh, raising funds, asking the Apostolic Delegate to intervene with this bishop or this Monsignor to give her more money for her hospitals, for her orphanages, for her schools. She was passionate about migrants, about the stranger, about making sure that Catholic migrants had faith. She loved the least of her brothers and sisters. And so she died led a saintly life. She teaches us that even here in the United States, there can be real saints. May Mother Cabrini help fill our hearts. May she intercede with us, for us, before the Sacred Heart of Jesus, that we might be zealous for the things of the Lord and not procrastinate, but build up his kingdom. May God bless you and your families this evening.